happy out here tonight. I wonder if that's going to be a, a factor or not. And a man who's always a factor in our introductions, Dangerous Don Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for Ridge on the River. The Clearwater River Casino is proud to bring you professional boxing back to the valley in the form of popular heavyweight explosion series sponsored by Corona Extra. I'm your ring announcer, Don Kelly. In the blue corner, from Kansas City, Missouri, with a professional record of 22 wins against four losses, with 13 KOs, please welcome Brian Scott. Scott! And his opponent, in the red corner, fighting out of Sumitra, Tennessee, with a professional record of 30 wins and only one loss, with an incredible 20 wins coming by way of knockout, please welcome Keith Knight. Knight. All right, referee Jerry Armstrong giving introductions and some of you might remember Jerry from the 1960 Rome Olympics. Is a bronze medalist there, Bob? I know he medaled. I'm not sure which one it was. Match up here. Big 40-pound weight advantage for Brian Scott. Height advantage goes to McKnight as well as the reach advantage. Scott, 28 years old, McKnight, 25. And again, the Idaho rules, three knockdown rules in effect. There is no standing eight count and you can be saved by, you cannot be saved by the bell, except in the last round. And there is the bell. For round number one, we're scheduled for 10. Brian Scott's in the white shorts, red stripe. Keith McKnight in the green with white. Don't leave your seat. McKnight's got 12 first round KOs. Brian Scott's got six. And a tough act to follow after that last fight. I mean, all of these, with, look at the size of these heavyweights in there, though. If anybody could follow that act, it's McKnight and Scott. I don't see how McKnight was ever a cruiserweight at this size. He, you know, he, he's built up at 220 pounds. I mean, he's, he's, I don't see how he ever weighed 190 with that frame. And he started his pro debut June 92, weighed 192 pounds against Roy Bedwell, who he stopped in two rounds. Brian Scott, on the other hand, started his pro career 288 yeah. and came down. Oh, he hurt McKnight a little bit with that hook, I think. McKnight seemed to buckle a little bit against the ropes. See if he's got his legs under him. Both, there's some good trainers working in this deal here. We've got Chuck McGregor helping Bam Bam Scott along with a nice combination by McKnight. Along with uh, Sean Gibbons against uh, Luther Burgess over there, one of the real gentlemen in boxing. Worked with some real good heavyweights in his day, along with Perry Farr in the other corner. Nice right hand lead. Brian Scott looking very sharp here in round number one as we're about halfway gone through the round. Scott, of course, as we mentioned, our open. Shocked a lot of people in boxing and certainly uh, the Duba family by knocking out Courage Chavalala in two rounds. It was a very highly touted heavyweight that we saw many times on Heavyweight Explosion. Good edge to quickness in McKnight, though. He's, uh, he's showing him, so he's got some nice little step around moves and everything. He doesn't like the size of this ring too much, but he's getting it done. Yeah. McKnight's starting to get things rolling here. Bob, how much of a fact is the 40-pound weight advantage, though, for, yeah. for Scott? It, it depends on what if uh, Keith lets him lay on him or not. It could certainly be a big advantage in the fight, but uh, a nice uppercut. That's what it, oh, it's hard, Scott. That's the uppercut. He knocked out Tui Turowick in Houston. Right on the button. And that was a first-round knockout as well. He lost track of the cat, or he's just going on Cliff Street, Bob. Sean Gibbons up on the ropes. Nothing you can do about it, though. He didn't get up. Yeah. Sort of a delayed reaction from the crowd there. Brian Scott still not understanding why he lost track of the count and what happened. And referee Jerry Armstrong explained it to him. Nine. You count 10, right. you don't get nice 11, you don't get 12. I think you got up at 9. KO. Watch the hole. 
<laughs> and, and keep McKnight's corner giving it to me and making me a believer. I was giving some. Hey, Jason. Yes, sir. Carry on, Brian McKnight getting all over me because I was over McKnight for saying he couldn't punch enough for him. Hey, anyway. Puts you guys away Brian Scott here in the first oh, round, and I've got to stand corrected. Very good punching power on the part of Keith McKnight. Dropping Brian Scott for the full 10 count. We'll take pick up the count here. There's six, seven, eight, nine. Armstrong couldn't be any clearer. Brian Scott really losing track of the count. But you got me on a good air and that's what I kind of put it up and I thought, I don't know what I was saying, but you're good, bro. Five good. Good sportsmanship on the ball. Brian Scott congratulating Keith McKnight for first the 31 wins. One loss, that's his 21th win by knockout. Brian Scott drops down to 22 and five. Don Kelly gonna give us the official time of the knockout. Your decision, KO, Keith Knight. Keith McKnight. Keith McKnight with a big first round knockout. Make sure to let me know that he's got that punching power. We're gonna find out what's next for him. As he's with Bob Spagnola, Luther Burgess, and Kerry. Take it away, Spag. I'm here with Team McKnight here. Sorry about the mispronunciation. Hey, listen, I, I've seen that uppercut someplace before. I believe it was down in Houston with Tui Tua. That's right. It was uh, with Tua, it was the right hand, but got, got some good work out of Frankie Swindell. I was catching him with that shot, and uh, we seen it was open, so we just let it go. You know, listen, this you know, a lot of we were saying in the in the pre-fight, we talked all about this. Bam Bam Scott, same thing, Midwestern fighter. Everybody said, hey, who's he fought? He never fought anybody. He knocks out Curry Shashabala on HBO. All of a sudden, he's somebody. Now they're talking about Keith. He's never fought anybody. So now they got to give you a due. That's right. You know, we're just taking taking it slow, moving up the ladder. And we were busy a lot there when I first turned pro. And, you know, we got a lot of fights, but hey, the best is yet to come. Hey, listen, I throughout my career as a manager, I've been accused of overprotecting guys but you only want to put a guy in a fight when you got the opportunity. You get some exposure, you put him in a fight, and, and then from there, then you're a genius or you're a dunce. But I got to tell you, you got Luther Burgess here. Kerry, I think it was a great move getting him involved. One of the class guys worked with good heavyweights over the years. How do you grade him tonight? Number one. Number one man. Eight. He had eight tonight. Eight tonight. Eight tonight. Right. Eight tonight. They had the monitor up here for a minute. I wanted to see if there was some confusion about whether or not uh, Bam Bam Scott had beat the count, but oh, he clearly did, he, he didn't beat it. He was he was looking to his corner, and they were telling him hold on, and uh, you know but he was hurt. Yeah. I just want to say this. I want to thank the Lord because that him not be possible, and I want to say hi to everybody at my mom's house and everybody in Georgia. I didn't forget about you. And we want to thank Cedric. Cedric Kushner, definitely. our promoter. Yes, we do. Yes, definitely. Take says hi, Cedric. Hi, Cedric. <laughs> now, hey, listen, excellent performance. It was tough coming after a fight at uh, Hampton and Rush. I mean, those guys yeah. just pulled out all the stops and uh, gave a great performance, but you pulled out all the stops in a real short period of time. You know, everybody was downplaying it because this guy was so much bigger than me, and, you know, I, I was a small guy. But, you know, when you got mobility and hand speed and you got a great trainer like Luther, and, you know, and I got a trainer at home, Mark Fraser, who helped me a lot, too. And with Kerry Farr, you know, like you said, the best is yet to come. You know, hey, listen, I think they'll be seeing a lot more of you, and we'll be thrilled it all started here on the heavyweight explosion. Congratulations, Keith. Thanks, Bobby. Back to you, Arnie. All right, thanks, Spag and Keith McKnight, making a believer of me cool. and uh, all right, it's all right. answering it's all right. our questions about punching power. We take a look, there was that big uppercut. And again, as Spag mentioned, we had seen that against Tui Tua down in Houston on the explosion. Brian Scott went down flat on his back, got up, listened to the count from referee Jerry Armstrong. Very reminiscent of a fight that I remember where Rafael Ruelas lost the count. Looking over to his corner. Armstrong counts 10. Scott gets up thinking it's time to fight again and wondering like what's going on. But I think that came with the punch. Keith McKnight improves to 31-5.